Good morning or good day, everyone, and welcome to NASGW's webinar. I'm Mo Damaris, the president of the National Association of Sporting Good Wholesalers. Today's topic in our sales and marketing series is 3.5 ways to differentiate your products and sell more. Our speakers today are Christopher DeCenzo and George Paris of Growth Strategy Partners. Growth Strategy Partners is a research-based management consulting firm which accelerates revenue and profit growth for privately held companies and many in the shooting and sports industry by implementing their seven keys to growth. Chris is the managing partner and the founder of Growth Strategy Partners. He specializes in growth strategy development, sales and marketing effectiveness, performance management systems, and process improvements, as well as product development and executive coaching. He has worked and consulted in numerous industries, including the firearms industry. George Harris is president and CEO of International Firearms Consultants and works with growth strategy partners, particularly in the firearms industry. He brings 40 years of experience and education to his clients in business growth and practical skills with firearms. George has spent his entire adult life working in the world of firearms. As a debil business developer in the firearms field, George co-founded the Six Sauer Academy and led it to become a profit center before retiring after 21 years of service. George earned his coveted U.S. Army Distinguished Badges from the Service Pistol Company. A reminder of 40, uh, ah, excuse me, a reminder of our uh, 41st annual meeting in Mexico will be held at the State House Convention Center in Little Rock, Arkansas from October 14th to the 17th. Hotel housing and registration are now open. For further information, visit our website at nasgw.org or click on the Expo notice from our homepage. Chris has provided some instructions to maximize your experience with today's webinar. And as always, we appreciate your feedback on both this program and any suggestions you may have in the f for future webinars. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to our speakers. Gentlemen? Thanks, Mo. And thanks, uh, NASGW, very much. I think this is our third or fourth webinar. Uh, so we hope it's entertaining and educational. Uh, today, again, we're going to talk about ways to differentiate your product. Uh, just so those listening know, we actually have a good, a good turnout today. Uh, mostly uh, manufacturers. There are some distributors and, and uh, some dealers on the line. Uh, the function is mostly in the sales and marketing area uh, with some presidents. So that gives you a little sense of, of uh, who's here, and we'll try to gear our speech to that. Um, George, you there ready to go? I'm ready to go. Take it so off. let's you. Let, let's ju jump right in, right? So here's here's what I want to ask for some help. Um, we're going to talk about differentiating your pro product, and we're going to talk about uh, all different types of products. We will talk a little about service uh, from the distributor's perspective and how to differentiate your services. But you know, here here's what I'm seeing, um, and, and I'm looking for help for, for this reason. Uh, basically, you know, when I go out and I try to buy something as a, as a consumer, uh, I, my wife says I spend too much time. She says I, I spend an hour looking at three pairs of blue pants and I still can't decide which one to buy. Part of that is just the, the, my background in engineering and the way the brain works. So now when I'm out trying to buy an AR or any other product, um, what I'm trying to, to, to find what's different, what's unique about what you're offering. And the AR market has, has been the big focus, along with the, the, the pocket pistols. But on the AR side, you know, this is usually what you see, uh, a man, a gentleman in uniform holding something with some words on it. And the challenge here that I'm having, and, and I'm no different than most consumers, is what's so special about what you're offering? How is this unique? How is this different? And so this is a little bit about a personal thing for me. Um, because I get frustrated, especially with the AR ads these days. But how, how can we make this easier for the consumer to decide to, to buy your product? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're, we're going to try to talk as much about many different products. We will have a theme on the AR, which is uh, you know, one of the big selling products these days, and we use that as, as examples. Uh, no intention of picking on this or, or making it you know, the success story. So today, what we're going to do 
is, is the goal for today is to provide you with at least two tools or techniques, actually three and a half tools and techniques, to help you differentiate the products and services that you have. Now, with a lot of the sales and marketing uh, execs on the line, many of you probably know what you need to do, but you're not doing it. Now, hopefully, we're going to give you some insights on things you don't know. In fact, I, I'm sure we will. But we'd also like to motivate you to take some action, do something about this. Because when we get into it and, and you talk about growth or success, it's about how well you in your company are doing relative to your competition. Okay, so hopefully this will give you a little motivation to take action. We're going to, agenda-wise today, um, let's talk about why does differentiation matter? How can your products be differentiated? We'll then talk about how do you define how to differentiate your products, substantiate that differentiation, and then promoting it. We're not going to... Um, we're not getting into the marketing and advertising as much. We're going to touch on that. It's really focused on the product and how do you differentiate that product. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, Mo has given us, given you a little background on George and myself. Uh, I think the, the key points on me to take away is that I'm both a, a business person, a, a growth expert. Uh, I actually spent a lot of years in product development and research and development. Uh, you can see I started in Ruger on the manufacturing side and actually got into the medical device R&D. But, you know, myself and, and my firm, along with George, not only understand the industry, we're actually users within that industry. So that's a little bit about me. George? Well, I, Mo did a pretty good job of uh, just describing me, but uh, one of my passions is um, education and uh, whether it's sales education, farms education, or anything else. And it's, it's simplifying education, making it easy for people to understand and then to, uh, to put into practical application. So I, I literally spent my whole life as an um, adult educator, and, and uh, it's almost all been in the, in, the, uh, in the farms world as well. So together... Uh, George and I, part of Growth Strategy Partners and International Firearms Consultants, the point that we've liked to make is that um, we know what needs to be done to build a successful business because we've done the research to identify what we call these seven keys to growth. We've built tools, and the consultant's been there, done that. So what's that mean to you? It means we can help you grow your business and implement faster than you can on your own. That's the benefit that we're talking about. Uh, George, I was actually just... Uh, doing a count, we've got over a dozen uh, clients in the shooting industry in the last, the last two years alone. So that gives them some insight on to uh, focus in the industry. And some more soon to come. And plenty more soon to come. Yeah. Um, all right, so today, let's talk about the points for today. What do we want to cover? What are the things that we want you to take away when, we're, when you're done today and, and do something with? Uh, the first thing is that differentiation makes money. It, it makes it easier, as you know, to sell your product, to make more money with that product, to get better placement on that product, to make better margin on that product. Differentiation is going to help you make money. But you're not going to be able to differentiate that product unless you have some customer input. George and I actually had, had a good time trying to figure out a good one on, on this statement in terms of, you know, you're shooting blanks. And we had a lot of other different creative ideas, some that we got a little carried away with and we, we took off. But yeah, so uh, totally unacceptable. <laughs> but, but the point is, we need, you need customer input to be able to identify how your products and services are different or unique. And then you need to quantify why this is unique. We're going to actually share with you why quantification of that uniqueness is so important, actually what it means. And then if you have it, yes, promote it. Um, if you have an ability to differentiate your product, and we've actually seen uh, a good number of companies, as you talk to the owners or salespeople about what's so special about their product, you don't see it in the literature, the ads, the print, the TV, whatever the case may be. So again, if you have it, promote it. Those are the four key points we want to make today. All said and done, the point here, the ending is, is he who executes the best wins. 
doesn't matter what you know, doesn't matter how well you've designed something and organized something, it really determines how well you execute. Even if you've got a bike that's pretty old and you're wearing a tie. So think about that's a who executes. Of Chris, Chris in his early years, by the way. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about um, differentiation. What is product differentiation? As a definition from, from Jay Barney, the process, the process of distinguishing the differences of a product or offering from others to make it a more attractive to a particular market. There's a whole component of product differentiation that gets into the question of, well, who's it for? Who's the market? That alone could be a, a one-hour um, webinar on market segmentation. So we're going we're gonna to touch on that just briefly today. But it's which, who you're trying to sell this to. So we're going to talk about the process of differentiation. And how does the process usually work? Most of our clients, and I think pretty much everybody on the, on the line here is a privately held business. Most of our clients are, are private. And quite often, the differentiation or development process works like this, where the owner or the president says, hey, I got a cool idea. And go design it, go make it, and then go sell it. Uh, it was actually, we, we've worked with a client in the past, and uh, the client was uh, one of the owners, uh, one of the family members, was, was, uh, was building a new rifle. And I asked him, you know, how are you deciding what to build, what put into that rifle? He goes, well, I'm building it the way I would like it. And I go, why are you doing that? And he said, well, I figure if I like it, everyone else is going to like it. And quite often, that's the development process. Now, um, we can argue all day whether it's right or wrong. Like, I guess I could argue that it's wrong, but as owners, you can decide what to do. We think there's a better process. And that process really should start with which customers, which segments are you looking to sell to, and then develop some concepts, get some customer input, design the product, manufacture the product, and then promote it. Again, this isn't the all-encompassing um, process, but to simplify what we're talking about today, Getting that customer input in the, in the segmentation is, is critically important. So we'll talk a little about that from a process perspective today. Um, let's talk about why differentiation is important. Yeah, if we, we look at the, uh, the top of the slide, uh, a year ago is what the gun shops looked like. And currently, uh, on the right side, that's what they look like. We uh, got lots of product. And uh, no ammunition, of course, but lots of product. And uh, we've got to figure out how to get rid of all these things. You know, what's, what's going to be the easiest way to sell them uh, to make the most money in the, in the quickest time possible? And one of my contentions is that it starts with uh, uh, differentiation from the manufacturing standpoint. Information, you know, why is this better? It's got a better trigger. It's got better sights. Uh, it's got to be quantifiable um, and should be in bullets of uh, two or three so that it's easily transferred from the manufacturer down to the distributor and they can pass that on to the dealer and of course the uh, the dealer can pass that on to the uh, to consumer uh, key things are you know what does the uh, the site do or the trigger do or the the grip or whatever how does it work why is it why is it good for the uh, uh, individual customer and just simple little things like that helps you to get you uh, get to know the customer enables cross-selling and uh, of course in one of our previous seminars um, cross-selling is a is a big deal you know, when you get to know the customer you know what they want the direction they're going in and then you can add accessories with these rifles as an example you'll see a number of them don't even have sights on them so Customers got to have sites. They've got to have slang. Got to have a cleaning kit, so on and so forth. So that uh, that adds to the the uh, cross selling and bottom line revenue. And uh, of course, the um, biggest thing is to make the customer, uh, no matter who you're selling to, feel good about the purchase. And if they uh, feel like they've made an informed and educated decision about the purchase, they'll feel a whole lot better about it. We talk about you know differentiation being important. Again, this is one of these things where we think many of you may know differentiation is important, uh, but how to maybe peel that back three or four layers uh, 
to define how you, how different your products or services are. Uh, and we're going to get into the, the characteristics, but before we do, what I want to do is actually start with a quick little poll um, in terms of rating your company's differentiation. So you should see a, a poll showing up um, that should say, you know, how would you rate your company's ability to differentiate your product? And just go click on it saying, you know, we do a very poor job, we do a poor job, average, well, very well. How well do you think you, you do differentiating your product and, and services and, and, uh, and what you sell? Um, and again, this is what you think uh, compared to what the customers think, because so it might be a, a part two. And then as we get into this, it's going to be um, how well you do it differentiated versus the competition. Okay, so we've got almost 80-something percent, uh, oh, 80 percent uh, completing it right now. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up in like three seconds, and then I will show you the results, and, and you can see again how you answered your question relative to the others. Um, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this poll, and I'm going to show it to you. And, George, I'm going to have you look at it and tell me what you see. All right. Yeah, every, everybody thinks they are, are doing pretty well. Nobody thinks they're perfect. So we're everybody's kind of middle of the road in, in uh, differentiation. So nobody's the, awful and nobody's perfect. Nobody's awful. Nobody's perfect. A little a average, you know, well, um, you know, a little above average, I guess, would have been a better term for that. Um, we've got some at the poor side. So. This is good. I, I, I like seeing those that think they're doing well. The question then is, uh, you know, did everybody that answered well all sell, selling the same product to the same customer? Therefore, you're all doing the same. So again, this is a, a relative, a relative uh, survey, relative, I call it relative growth on the growth side. But if you've scored yourself a 7 out of 10 and your direct competitor gave themselves a 7 out of 10, well, you're basically, you know, no, it's zero. So who's going to get to the eight or nine or ten out of ten to really differentiate? So this is a relative discussion that we're having. And you know, kind of one of my little pet peeves is is some of the the manufacturers out there, uh, you know, don't differentiate the product at all. And there's so many of them out there. It's 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 hard as a consumer to go, geez, which one do I buy? But anyways, we'll uh, we'll get back to that. So thank you for that and. Uh, Let's go back to the presentation. And George, we're going to we're going to talk now about um, who defines it. There we go. Um, some people like to take a shotgun approach and and just throw it out there for the uh, you know the best man to win, so to speak. But uh, we find that uh, there are a bunch of different segments of society, and we've got to pick those, target them, and uh, and work pretty hard with those. Uh, women are uh, is probably the the biggest segment of uh, growth in gun owners, and I'm going to tell you, you know, from our uh, training business, the uh, the youth market is coming on. I mean, just like gangbusters. And uh, one of the other things that uh, is surprising us is the uh, the older shooter, like the uh, little old lady in the the uh, the bottom of the screen there. Uh, uh, We've had a lot of people that come in that uh, are retired, and uh, you know they're interested. Uh, personal defense, primarily. Of course, there are other segments too. You've got the uh, the guy in the upper left. Uh, looks like a prepper, maybe. Could be a law enforcement type, but uh, you know that's a segment. Then you've got the target shooter, uh, competitive pistol shooter. You've got the hunter, the shotgunner. So you've got a, a number of different segments that you can go in and that you should go in and, and your if your product uh, fits in a specific niche that's where it needs to be directed and if it uh, you know covers everything let's say like cleaning equipment as an example um, I, I know that some of the manufacturers actually make cleaning kits for ladies and uh, you know they've they've chose to, uh, a wise route actually to differentiate their products you know just for the ladies so pretty uh, 
pretty specific stuff, and it's uh, it's something important to be looked at. Well, it's important because it's your customer that's going to define what's special and unique, right? I'm mean, going to go back to that, that client of mine that was that was building that rifle. And he was building it for himself, thinking he's your typical average shooter, which isn't the case. And, and you know, kind of my question was, well, you're building it for the typical average shooter? Who are you building it for? And, and you know, that conversation, you know, kept going down a path that, you know, didn't get a lot of good answers. That's but, the problem that, that a lot of us have in the industry. You know, we assume everybody knows everything that we do and that, um, you know, they, everybody that we talk to or that we try to approach is at the level that, that we can talk and speak. And what we end up finding out is, uh, particularly with the beginning folks, they don't know anything. And you've got to take it right from the, the, the very bottom and show them how it works and why it works and how it's going to be good for them and how they can be successful with it. And they're the keys to uh, selling somebody something or educating them so that, uh, you know, they'll stick with it and continue on. So we've now, um, again, I'll review kind of the process here. We've talked about some segments you want to target, and we're now, we may have put a concept together of what type of, of gun or product or grip or site that we want to develop. And then, you know, the important thing here, one of the, one of the themes today was getting customer input. And it's your customer that defines that input. So, you know, how, how many of you here are actually getting formal customer input uh, in developing products and revising products? And we'll get to that in a, in a second. But the next thing is then, okay, let's talk about differentiation. How do you differentiate your product? Let's talk about the ways. These, these uh, are a, uh, a short list of a number of things that you can use for differentiation. One of the things that you want to be careful about is uh, the, the claim. You know, we can claim durability, reliability, accuracy, and all that kind of good stuff. But if we don't have anything to back it up, it's basically an empty claim. You know, when, when Chris and I have done surveys with people and ask, you know, what makes your product unique, uh, we'll get something like, well, it's made in the USA. Well, okay. Um, a lot of things. How many, how many are made in the USA, right? I mean. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. You know, for some people that's important, for other people that's not so important. And uh, again, you know, how many? So we talk about durability and reliability. And everybody says their product is, you know, will last forever. Well, re will it really? Has it undergone any test? Is there any quantification to, uh, to support what we're talking about? And if you've got the quantification, that's good. But if you don't, um, really, you're just, um, saying something that's meaningless. Um, one of the, the, the products that I've worked with in the past that um, I felt pretty strongly about, uh, I could easily say and, and demonstrate uh, either online or, or uh, in person that this product had 30 different possible sight combinations. It had four different grip styles. I could get it and uh, provide it in four different calibers. Um, I could uh, give you uh, three different types of triggers. And these were all interchangeable from one to the next. And uh, you know, I could show it on the spot, quantified, and there we go. So if you can do that, that's, uh, that's pretty important. Uh, one of the things that uh, I always felt very strongly about was service and support. Um, you know, the, the gun is only, or the, the product is only, I don't care whether it's lights, lasers, uh, ammunition, or whatever, it's only as good as the, the factory will support it. And, um, you know, you, you see a lot of lifetime warranties, and then below that, uh, all kinds of caveats. So, you know, if you've got a lifetime warranty, really, you know, stick with it. And, uh, you know, word of mouth will, will, uh, will carry you forward. The, uh, the other thing that is, is really important is uh, customer service. When a customer's got a problem and they call in, how are they treated? And I find that um, uh, a lot of the companies that we work with and, and that we consult with, uh, need a little help with the customer service end of things. Uh, not only are they there to help people uh, to 
can do it simple and easy and make the customer happy. But um, they can also sell uh, and they can also glean information. And that's what we're going to lead into in a little bit about how do we get customer feedback. And one of the places that you can get some of the best customer feedback is through your customer service bureau. So we've now gone through a somewhat of a high level. Um, how, do you, how do you differentiate your product? You know, you, you need to a look at a segment, identify a segment you may going be going after. Uh, you then need to uh, get some input from your from your customer, and here's some characteristics of what you may want to to learn. So let's put this all together and say, okay, great, let's go out and do this. Okay, so who are you going to ask first of all? Well, you've got some existing customers. You have your prospective customers. And then, you know, this whole discussion of segments, okay? So the first thing is if you do want to get customer input, which you, you know, let's say you do want to, you need to, uh, how are you going to do that, okay? And, and who are you going to go after? Now, hopefully many of you have, you know, a database CRM tool or something like that that captures some of your customer, your current customer information. Um, and so you can use that to know your existing customers. Now, again, that's a good starting point, but what about prospective customers, especially going into something new? Okay, you know, how would you, how would you do that? What would you ask them? Okay, there's a whole, um, again, another series of what do you ask them? Uh, what influences what you buy? What companies come to mind? I, I remember uh, years ago I, I received a marketing call, and for some reason I picked up the phone, which is a whole other stupid thing. And uh, but the, the the person started asking me about um, you know can I talk to you about insurance companies? And I said yeah sure. I said you know can you name me some insurance companies? And I might have named one or two. Um, and then they started going through when that the questions top of mind. Who do you think of? You know and they said when you think of low cost, who do you think of? When you think of options to buy, who do you think of? Uh, and that started triggering some thoughts. Uh, based on the ads that they were doing, and then you know, so they went through and you know said, "Have you ever heard of of X, Y, Z?" And I said, "Well, yeah, sure. And of course, it didn't come to top of mind. But you know, who do you ask?" And then the question is, "How do you do that? How do you get input from the customer?" Um, you'll see the Facebook and, and Twitter. Most of most of the companies we've seen do have a, a Facebook, if not Twitter, account. Um, You've got your existing customers. Uh, you've got, you know, we use a tool. We've used a tool called SurveyMonkey. It's a great way to get some uh, independent uh, surveys done. As a AR15.com, if you want the AR side and any other websites, there's plenty of ways to go out there and get feedback. The question is, are you doing it? We actually had a project George and I are working on, where a client was thinking of getting into uh, a new market segment, a new new firearm. And this is a company that has a bunch of different brands and different types of, of firearms. And they were looking to get into a different one. And, you know, I, I, I applaud them. They, they, they not only hired us, but they wanted to do some market research. Is there a market out there for this product? What would they buy? What does this thing need to look like? What features? What characteristics? What does it need to look like? And they had um, uh, a database of all their clients, all their customers, excuse me. And again, across these different brands. So, you know, we said, well, geez, that's great because they're existing customers. Some of them are in a different brand, which is unrelated to where this new product is going to be introduced. So they were somewhat, although they were customers of the company, they really weren't customers of this future product. And we said, let's go out and use that database first. And we actually did some surveying so we knew when we launched the invite to the, to the we use Survey Monkey who responded based on what list they came from, from which, which brand they had bought from. And then we looked at using you know, another AR15.com and other uh, third-party database uh, to do some research. And we didn't need to because the data that came back was very, very helpful in deciding, uh, A, is there a market for this product? And then um, you know, what should it look like? And you know, the client was very, very happy about the answers. And we were actually very happy because they had the, the list we could use. But, the point is customer input, and that was what was very, very helpful in starting design, you know, the future of this, this company. Let's um, want to ask another question. 
this gets back to uh, customer input. And the question is, how often do you formally collect customer input when you're developing, uh, designing, refining a new product? So how often do you formally collect customer input? If you'd um, never, never do it, sometimes we do it, most of the time always. Kind of made it simple for you. There's only four choices. So we'll find out how often people do this. And again, you can see what you're doing versus what the others are doing. Um, it's kind of showing up as I expected it would. But I'll show it to you always. Oops. There's, OK, there's, there's some good answers here. Um, but as, we, as we're talking about this customer input, again, we all know, I don't think there's anybody you know, listening here today that, that would question the need for customer input. But again, how do we, how do we get it and do we get it? Um, so let me, let me show, show you um, what we have, George, and I'll let you um, comment on this. So I closed it. I'm going to share it with you. Uh, that would have been my vote right down the uh, right down the pipe. Those exact numbers. E exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I, I I I don't think I would have gone with the nine percent on the always. I'm not sure that anybody does that, but maybe they do. Uh, but uh, um, in the folks that, that we worked with before, it's been um, well. Yeah, we we kind of dabble in it. But uh, you know we don't we don't uh, get too hot and heavy in it. And, and one of the things with that is uh, simply uh, we don't want to let the cat out of the bag. You know we're building a new X Y Z or whatever it may be. And uh, you know if we get too specific about it, all of a sudden people start to uh, you know inquiring minds want to know. So that's you know that that's one of the reasons. Uh, some of the more successful which, which companies. Which is interesting, George. Sorry, yeah. George, to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. I was I was talking to um, an executive at a at a much larger public company a week or so ago, and I've heard this comment before because uh, we got into well the secrets getting out, and the topic we were we were on was 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 goals and strategies for the business, and you know not that you want to share where, what you're doing where you're going. But this executive's comment was, Chris, you know, I could I could leave my my business plan if you want on the, the the bus someday, and yeah, I wouldn't like to do that, but it really wouldn't bother me because they need to execute it, and what we've become good at is executing, and that's again one of the themes here today. So uh, it's I, I have a debate with with people that say, well, geez, if we say something, we'll let the the cat out of the bag. Uh, I, I'd be very surprised that if if ABC company is going to go develop something and someone heard about it, they're going to go develop it immediately themselves. I mean, obviously a little quicker than usual, but just a little a little comment there. Yeah, one, one, what I was going to say is one of the more successful companies that we uh, currently work with um, literally has a uh, customer suggestion box, uh, so to speak, and without letting too much out of the bag, but um, they, uh, they, uh, embrace customer suggestions. And basically what they do is they take all these suggestions and they compile them in different segments. And then they'll, they'll get a trend and uh, literally will, uh, will alter production if the, the demand is there for a particular stock or sites or barrel or some sort of a, a configuration. Because uh, you know, that, that's a trend that the customers want. And one of the problems we have in the industry, uh, you know, we know what we know, and we get a little bit jaded with that. And, and um, you know, I've been guilty of this um, uh, many times. I try not to be, but, you know, I just can't help it sometimes. I know what the customer needs in order to be able to get whatever it is that they want to get done because I've been there, done that, and so on and so forth. However, that's not what the customer wants. And you know, customers king. You got to realize it. And you know, I, I think it's our responsibility in some cases maybe to uh, make a suggestion as to what we think. But uh, if that's not what they want, we need to give them what they want. You know, as long as it's safe and uh, and legal. And to do that, all. we need to ask them. So exactly. you know, taken away out of this survey, you know, almost seventy-five percent of those on the line here uh, are not formally asking their customers enough. Uh, what 
they would like in their product. So, you know, for those that are in that category, you know, that would be great. One thing to change. And again, we all get stuck in the, well, you know, we can't design the perfect survey, can't get the perfect group, can't get the, the perfect survey monkey, whatever it is. It's always reasons why you can't do it perfect. You know, I'd encourage you just to get going and then and then learn from there. Yeah, so and, and you can uh, always adjust as you go. Exactly. Well, that's yeah. the process piece, right? Right, exactly. So let's go back and, and show you um, some surveys that we have done. Um, actually, that we haven't done. This was a, a survey from the National Shooting Sports Foundation. <clears throat> question was, uh, how important which of the following reasons for buying your first, uh, your most recent, excuse me, uh, modern sporting rifle, uh, 2010. Uh, and it shows you accuracy, reliability, reputation. You can see uh, the list of it actually has it broken down by segment, the military law enforcement, non-military law enforcement. This was one page of, geez, 60, 70 pages um, that uh, identified well, this is what they were, they're the general audience, but what what did they want to buy an AR? What, what, what drove their decision? So there's ways to get some public data out there. I believe the National Shooting Sports Foundation just released a report on the on the, the first-time shooter. They actually have some, some great, great data. I uh, encourage you to go use that. So go back a little. We've We've talked about needing to get customer input. We've talked about some of the characteristics that you should be asking. Now what? Now what do you do? Well, I'd start internally. Internally with, well, how do your products rate or compare to what the customer's looking for? So if we've gone out and we've now, you know, again, jumping here quickly, but you've done a little survey to understand what the customer's looking for. Even if you want to take, you know, an existing, a, here's an AR survey, this is what they're using. Well, let's see how do we compare uh, to other manufacturers. So I'll go back to my, my past client there that's developing you know, this rifle, and he's building it his way because that's what he wants. Well, my question is, well, maybe it's already out there. You know, and, and what are your features going to be, and what is the customer going to see on yours versus what's already out there? And I guess you got the whole price point component in there. So... Here's just, a, again, a quick sample, you know, where here's your company at the top. These are all a bunch of AR companies in alphabetical order, no, no rhyme or reason there. And you're comparing, let's say, a base model of AR to what you have. And it's been rated here. I did not uh, tally up the scores. I didn't want to show that there was any winner here on this, but you can do that yourself, obviously, internally. But the goal here is to see where are your products different or unique to the competition, which will then give you hopefully some insights on then how to market and promote it. I would, um, again, this gets into a lot of details on surveying and, and, and customer input, but doing it internally alone, I think, uh, would be very beneficial. We've, we've asked clients, uh, even if they have an uncustomer service, well, let's do it ourselves. You know, let's, let's compare, let's be objective and try to rate our product to the competitor's product. That alone might give you some insights as to where it is. In this case here, I've highlighted accuracy, the features that they offer, and the appearance of the, of the gun, where they've scored, let's say, higher. That would be something that you could now use in your marketing and promotion. Now, that's again the, the one star. George talked earlier about quantifying the difference. We talked earlier about quantifying the difference. We found, one of the things that we do at Growth Strategy Partners, we find really good tools out there and we borrow them uh, to, help, to help you. We're, you know, whether we invent great things or not, it's more about finding good tools. And one of the tools that we found out there, uh, created by Doug Hall, uh, he actually wrote a book called Jumpstart Your Business Brain. Uh, for all the sales and marketing people here, actually even the presidents, I would highly encourage you to read it. Uh, and the summary is this. He's actually done research that finds out when somebody is promoting, when a company is promoting you know, their product, and they can outline an overt benefit, an overt benefit, not a feature, but a benefit. And again, it's the lightest. It doesn't need lubrication. It's easier to maintain. If you have a low definition of an overt benefit, your success is 13% better than those that don't have it. If you have a high overt benefit, 
you're 38 percent more likely to be successful in what you're doing versus those that don't. So the first law, he calls it the three laws of marketing physics, is have an overt benefit. The second law is have a reason to believe that benefit. Does it need lube? Lightest. How would you quantify what's your reason to believe that that benefit makes sense? And you can see again the a high reason to believe is going to give you a 42% chance odds of success. Well, you know, this gun's used by the FBI, the DEA, whatever, won the Gun of the Year Award, SHOT Show Award, you know, independent research studies. That supports the benefit. And then the third piece is, what's the difference? What's your dramatic difference? 27% more accurate, three times by the number of agencies, sold by the top three, whatever. That gives you almost a 53% probability of success. So what Doug Hall has found is that if you identify the overt benefit, not the feature, the benefit, show the reason that it should be believed and what the dramatic difference is, you are more likely to be successful than those that don't. And again, we're talking about comparison. So for you know those that are in the middle of the road saying, yeah, sometimes I, I do a good job differentiating, sometimes I get customer input, to move that up a notch or two, you're going to beat those that aren't doing it. And again, it's all about, it's about winning. So let's talk about benefits versus features. I think George is going to go through this. All right. Well, one of the things to, to look at is uh, a benefit is what creates a success for the, uh, the, the user or the buyer. Um, with the, the cold hammer forged barrels as an example. You know, they're durable, they last longer. Chambers are manufactured along with the, uh, the interior of the barrel. They're always straight. You know, there, there are lots of benefits there. Now, what does that mean? Um, that the gun will last longer than, uh, you know, a comparable gun. That's pretty much uh, uh, accepted industry standard. The um, other things that we, we look at there are things that will help the, uh, the individual owner uh, be more successful. It actually helps their self-esteem, if you will. And uh, part of that is appealing to the emotion of the, uh, the user. You know, they feel good about this is a, a, something I can be successful with, or I can see better, or I can work with or hit better. So the, uh, the benefits are uh, as much uh, emotional, feel good, as they are practical. And of course, they, they're, they're practical as well, as you can see there. So focus on the benefit, right, not the feature. What's it going to get for you? So exactly. here's, you know, I've got a couple examples. So, you know, I thought about I brought up earlier the insurance, right? Well, okay, so we're into the promotional piece. I talked about four, four, four keys today we wanted to focus on. Um, um, you know, getting customer input, uh, differentiating it, quantifying a differentiation, promoting it. And this is that promotional piece. And, you know, you, you, you hear the Geico commercial all the time, right? 15 minutes could, could, could save you 15%. Um, you know, how does that compare to the progressive ads? Those are the two I know about you, but I keep seeing it all the time. Uh, farmers and Allstate, you know, so you can see who they're comparing to. Uh, this is this is a, an industry I think that does a fairly good job, you know, not only showing the difference but quantifying that difference. If you look at um, on the firearm side, because I've been say what pointing fingers at the AR manufacturers, uh, here's a couple that do a much better job, I think, uh, differentiating. Uh, Daniel Defense has been doing this for, for a while now. Again, it's as you, as you dig into this, it's really talking about features uh, more than benefits. Uh, the benefits are somewhat embedded in here. On the DPMS side, lightest, most reliable, technically advanced, I guess I might have a question of, but it's, it's pretty much, it's right out there. Okay, I thought those are pretty good examples. And the one that um, was intriguing to me that we, we dug into a lot more at the SHOT Show this year, uh, POF, um, 
one of these companies that we think is not doing as good of a job, or excuse me, has a lot of, of benefits that they are, are at least not getting out there. This is a, a piece uh, of, of their catalog. And uh, on the left side, you'll see this is basically the, the part of the gun. The gun's on the far left side here. And you can see the numbers around each part. And this is the number of the parts. But what they've done here on in the middle section, on the right side of that page, is identify the benefit. And I've made this a little larger here. It's kind of a code, right? This is a it dissipates heat, increases rigidity, natural lubricant. So they've actually gone through and identified what the benefit is of that feature. Again, we can we can debate this probably a long time, but they've gone to translating that those features into benefits. That's so that's what we think is 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 really good. Yeah, um, I agree. That, you know, that that is absolutely key because it affects the individual uh, in in more ways when you have uh, a benefit, you know, as related to a feature, and a benefit comes from the feature, but is not the feature itself. Exactly. So let's let's try to wrap this up. We will um, uh, start answering some questions. I see there's a couple here. We've got a couple more slides. I'm going to get into questions. Do you have any questions you'd like us to answer? Please uh, should be in that window. We should be able to type that in, and we'll we'll get to it. Um, so in summary, personally, most companies don't do a good job differentiating their products. They don't differentiate them well. In fact, even you know, to your answers today, uh, many of you said you don't do a great job. Uh, you do know that if you do differentiate the product, your revenues are going to be easier, your profitability is going to be easier selling. There's many, many reasons why differentiation is important at the product side. Now, we've talked about the three and a half ways, you know, to do this. And what we were really focusing on today was obtaining customer input, quantifying that difference and promoting your difference. And where'd the half come into play? Well, the half comes into play if you have inventory in stock and there's so much demand, doesn't really matter if you differentiate your product because you've got it in stock. And that's where the AR comes into play in that picture early on. Uh, George talked about with the empty shelves, if you had it in stock, you know, you were going to sell it. But, but that's over. That's done. You know, we're, at least on the AR side, uh, we're, we're getting back to a little more normal. I think ammo is coming a little back to normal, uh, almost uh, pocket pistols. It's getting a little more normal. I'm sure if we wait six months or a year, something will happen, and we'll be back maybe on that demand side. Uh, I think on a side note, I think I'd, we'd done a survey with some of our uh, shooting execs, and they were projecting a flat to uh, little up year this year overall, just as another little side note here. Um, the, the, the big key here, though, is he who executes the best is going to win. So if you have not been getting customer input and you now start receiving customer input and you start using that input to differentiate your product or, or maybe make some changes to the product, that's what's going to help you be more successful than your competition because it, that's, it comes down to that. You don't have to be the best differentiated product in the market, you just have to be better than who you're competing with. And so, get, the word, get the word out there, too. And get the word uh, out, and you've got to promote it. To, to add to that just a, a wee bit, um, those in the accessory market or that, that um, are selling guns and accessories or, or just playing in the accessories still have uh, quite a bit of work to do uh, and uh, market to, to take because everybody's bought their guns now. You know, they've got the base material, and it's a general feeling in the industry that uh, the accessory people have um, uh, are still a pretty good open door. So uh, those of you with the cleaning kits and the, the uh, sights and lasers, and all the things that we can gussy up our guns with, you know, uh, the future is still bright. But the key is to get the word out. So let's, uh, one last poll, then we'll get to questions. Uh, the last poll question is, what's going to be your two greatest challenges um, implementing a product differentiation plan or strategy? What's going to be your two, you get two choices here. Two greatest challenges, um, getting the input from the customer 
I'll say identifying how your product's unique, that would be getting your customer identify it or you identifying it. The quantification, okay, of how your product's unique, promoting it, or <laughs> I can't find the time to work on this project, let alone everything else I'm doing. So you do that, and um, we'll share that poll with you. And then we'll, uh, we'll take some questions. It's funny, I'm getting 110% that are saying they can't find the time to work on it. I don't know how that works out. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, where we come in. We, we, we take care of it. All right, so we got just about everybody um, uh, completing this now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you uh, the numbers. George, I'll share them with you. A couple, couple more still coming in. Um, all right, the two greatest challenges that you're going to have implementing, differentiating your products is going to be this. So I'm going to close it, and I'm going to share it. George, let your comment on that. I'm speechless. I, I'm, I'm well, they're I, not. I, they're not. They're not. They're not challenged with identifying how they're unique, which is interesting because um, after that one, I mean, forty-three versus fifty, you know, um, percent, they're almost equal. Right? Yeah, getting customer yeah. input, promoting it, quantifying it, and obviously there's that time one. I always throw that the time one in there because you know it's where do you put this, um, you know, in the in the project list. Um, but it looks, you know, receiving it, quantifying, quantifying it's very hard. Uh, quantifying is very hard. One thing that, that I know that we do um, on the consulting side, and we get a service, so it's it's sometimes even more difficult to quantify services. Obviously, the testimonials, the customer testimonials that they love what we do. Um, obviously, we've got some quantification of profit improvement and revenue enhancement, uh, customer diversification numbers, which are very, very helpful because you, you can see that. Um, but we, you know, part of that obviously is that my background in engineering and genetics of engineering is I'm a numbers-driven guy and I want to see numbers uh, both for our client and for us. So um, interesting. So think about, you know, the, the project one obviously is where I would start. And if you can't get time to work on the project, you're never going to customer input, you're never going to quantify it. The, the thing that we didn't... Um, um, I, I talked a little about, but then emphasize the process. You know, I rarely see an organization that that starts something, gets it done, and it's all said and done. It's an evolution. You you evolve. You get some input. You adjust it. You may change your product. You may get more input. It's a process, and that's kind of what we've talked about today, and 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 somewhat the little play on words of three and a half ways to differentiate. It's three and a half ways to build a process to help you differentiate your products down the road. And the process is what's going to be very, very helpful to you. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that we find is that um, you know people will hit it hot and heavy one time and say, "Aha, this is it," and then uh, kick it up in neutral and coast for a while. And it, it, like you say, it's a process. It's got to be a, a continuing evolution. And customers change their mind. Customers are fickle, as we all know. So uh, you know you got to keep up with them and see what they're uh, what they're up to next. One thing we didn't mention is, you know, the, the gun writers of the world, of which I'm one of those folks. Um, it's amazing at how much the uh, the gun writers influence the uh, the public perception and the and the buying of the market. So, uh, as a manufacturer in particular, and even distributors and dealers interfacing with the uh, the, the uh, gun media people is uh, is all important to keep keep the edge. All right, let's get a few questions. I got about, if I can see, five minutes left. Um, one of the questions was uh, the resource we talked about in terms of that first-time shooter information. That's the National Shooting Sports Foundation, NSSF. Uh, they've got a lot of research there as a member. I think that actually, that one there is free. Uh, the um, the AR, um, uh, I think originally might have been free also, or $1,500. So NSSF has some great data. I always suggest we start there. And then go to your your um, your specific customer data or generic data. Um, one of the questions was, uh, do you start differentiating a, an existing product or a new product? 
where do you start, I guess, is a bigger question. The, um, if you wait for a new product to come out, that, that's ideal, that's nice, or an or enhanced product. Uh, definitely, if you're in the, in the uh, mode or process of developing or designing something new, go out and get input on that. Uh, but you can always work on your existing. Um, you know, if you've got existing products out there, you've got grips or sites or lubricants. Uh, you know, lubricants is another one. You know, there, there's so many out there. And cleaning solutions, you know, how are they unique? How are they special? Um, you know, do some surveys. Uh, do some blind surveys online. You know, go online and, and don't let them know it's you. And, and do a blind survey. What's the, the Coke and Pepsi taste test or whatever that might be. Uh, so, you know, ideally a new product or, or, or an enhanced product, but take use of some of the existing ones and, and do it on that. Uh, the other question that I see that's interesting is how do I convince the owners that this is important to do? <laughs> um, interesting. Um, many of the owners I talked about earlier have their way of doing things. Um, this should be part of any sales and marketing, which is a lot of the, the people here. Um, getting customer input and feedback is, is should be part of that job. So this should be what you're doing as a matter of course. But to do something formally, you know, it, it's a very somewhat short, simple answer. Either they listen to you or they don't. Um, I would obviously build a business case on how you would do it and how you'd approach it. Uh, if they don't answer to you then or listen to you, then yeah, an outside you know reference, you can send them the presentation. Uh, it says here enough why it's important. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to them or anyone else you may know. So if they don't listen to you, you know, then you might need to get someone to um, else to convince them. Sometimes it's always better to get somebody from the outside. You know, it's the uh, uh, expert theory, man with a briefcase more than 50 miles away. You know, he can tell them, uh, you know, the owners or whoever the responsible parties are, the same thing that you did. Um, and he accepts that or she accepts that and you're sitting there scratching your head. Uh, you know, it's just a fact of life. You know, you, Sad that just brings somebody else in. Yep. So let's wrap this up. Um, what are your next steps? Commit to doing something. That, that's that been the big piece. You know, we've got this knowledge. We've got this approach. You, you've, you've hopefully gained something today. Commit to doing something. Doing a survey. Doing an internal survey. Uh, one of the other questions was talking about where well, we get the numbers on the survey. Do it internally if, you, if it's too difficult or to whatever to go outside and get customer. But uh, you know, evaluate what your differentiation is and what the challenges you have. Where is it that you can get a little bang for the buck, a little little movement? Identify those areas for improvement and, and start making some of those changes. The other thing is if you if you having trouble either convincing people to do it, the owner, or you need help. You know, reach out for it. Okay, if you need help, go get it. Don't just you know, just sit there and go, oh, geez, don't have enough. You know, can't do it. Don't know how to do that. Which we see that a lot, unfortunately. Um, you know, the worst thing you can do is nothing. You you spent some time today. We hope you got some education, but and maybe confirmed what you knew. But what are you going to do about it? We can gladly and and you know help you. Call us. Um, we've got assessments that we can do. We've got a product development processes. We could help you get the customer input. Uh, kind of our value add, our differentiator is that we can do it faster and better than you can because of the research and skills and capabilities that we have. But I'd ask you to, to call us, contact us, and um, us or anybody else, but you know, get something done. So that's it uh, for today. We will be sending a copy of the presentation out to everybody uh, that attended. If you have more questions, you can see George and my phone number and email. Please give us a ring. I'd like to thank uh, Mo and NASGW for letting us present today. And uh, thank you all, and, and have a great day. Yeah, and I'd like to, uh, to close by saying use us as a resource. We're always happy to help one way or the other. So, uh, you know, we're, we're open to uh, giving a little guidance, a little push, and a little networking here and there. And, and uh, of course, we're always open for some business. But, uh, uh, you know, look at us as a, a, a group that can maybe push you uh, in the correct direction sometime with a little bit of encouragement. So anyhow, thanks for attending and listening today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.